Hey friends, Leslie from A Friend to Knit With. Welcome to episode 31 of A Friend to Knit With podcast. Today is October 20th, Thursday morning, and it is a perfect autumn day here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Crisp, crisp morning and blue blue skies and cozy sweaters. Could not be better. I can be found on Instagram as Leslie Friend. I am friend to friend on Ravelry and my blog name is a friend to knit with. Although I haven't been on either Ravelry or my blog for over a month. So I apologize if you've been messing, messaging me there over there. I just, I was traveling for a month and I didn't go on, I barely went on Instagram. I didn't go on either of those websites at all. So if you've stumbled upon this channel, it is a channel mostly about knitting. So if you love to knit as much as I love to knit, then you're in the right spot. And if you're returning, thanks so much for stopping by. I guess I'm just going to head on into what I'm wearing. Um, this is the Rubinia sweater by Ann Vincel. It's her newest design. And I saw this at the end of August and messaged my friend Katrine over at Unling and asked her if she could put together a kit for it. Uh, and Vincel shows it in like a yellow and a blue and they're both, both gorgeous colors, but I wanted um, a camel sort of caramely color. So Katrine did not disappoint and Unling did an amazing job. So I used these three, th these three colors held together, and this is my white. Hmm, I always, I don't know how to exactly say this, and um, is it, I say, yeah, I say, yeah. Of course, I would say, I say, girl, I say, yeah. Uh, this is their Echo Wool, which is just mm, fluffy and wonderful. I'd actually love to make an entire sweater out of this. It's not at all scratchy. It just feels really amazing. And it is, I think it has some cotton. Yes, it's cotton, organic cotton and alpaca. So it is definitely eco soft. Mm. I absolutely love it. And then I held it together with this silk mohair blend of Unlings. And this is... Isa Yer's uh, tweed, and it is a wool and mohair. And look at the fun little flecks of color in that. I love that. And then this is um, cotton and wool. And I think this is the links too. Uh, so I absolutely love how the fabric turned out and I cannot actually love the sweater anymore. I, I always say that my husband says every time and he's, this morning, he said, don't get mad, but that really is my favorite. <laughs> so it is, look at how that mm, st knit the stitch definition of that. I absolutely think that this fabric is just squishy and really, really yummy. Um, so I fell in love with this sweater when I saw it on Ann Vincel's um, Instagram account and immediately messaged Katrine and she put together this kit and we were trying to get it. I was leaving um, like, a, no, September 16th, I think. And she was, we were trying to get it to the United States before then, but then we figured out it would not get here on time. And I really wanted to work this on this on my trip. So she came up with a plan to mail it to me in Portugal when I arrived in Portugal. And you should have seen me. I, I could not wait to get to the hotel. And then the hotel could not be lovelier. As soon as we walk in, they're like, oh, you know, you have a package here. And I was just thrilled. So anyway, I started it immediately, took it on the trains and the planes. And it was really fantastic. I will say working with three different balls of yarn can be a bit fid fiddly. So I, when I was on public transportation, I put them in a bag and just kind of let them roll around because I, I did not have it caked up like this. I've caked it up since I've gotten home 
but I, with the ones I was using, I had to roll them into balls. So the balls would just fly, you know, everywhere if you didn't hold it down. So I had to, uh, you know, keep them together in a bag. And so I was just pulling out of the top of the bag and just kind of let them get tangled and twisted in there. Now, I also will say if you are strictly an English knitter, which I, I, I knit English style. I have taught myself how to knit continental. Uh, knitting two-handed, stranded knitting is definitely the way to go, especially if you have balls that you're holding together. Uh, it would have just been a tangled mess if I would have knit only English style because you're always just twisting those two, you know, together. And yes, but two-handed knitting, they don't get tangled at all all and you can still you know your floats are still tacked down so i highly recommend it recommend if you don't know how to do that teaching yourself how to uh knit two-handed stranded knitting it was very very helpful so ann did an amazing job designing the sweater i love all of her sweaters actually if you've ever if you don't know who she is I'll have everything linked below, but she is an amazing designer. I would love every single one of her sweaters. I'm not kidding. They're, they're beautiful. Uh, this construction was top down. Um, you know, you do the front and then you do the back. So you pick up stitches along the shoulder, along one shoulder, cast on, and then do the other shoulder. And she has amazing YouTube videos to help you along the way. Um, I will say... I had a bit of a time with, there's only like two rows of ribbing or maybe three um, on the neckline. And in order to, she does not do short rows, she did not do short rows on this. In order to achieve the higher part in the back, she just did one whole extra repeat of the pattern. And when you pick up the stitches and cast on and then pick up on the other side my this part was super loose and I followed her YouTube video I don't know what I did wrong but mine was extremely loose so what I did is I have elastic thread and you can just thread it through you know I did two passes so I threaded it through and then I came back and I tightened it up and that works wonders so elastic thread is sold at, you know, every fabric store. So you can buy that. I don't know why yarn stores don't buy that. Maybe they do, but I'm not seeing it at my yarn store. But anyhow, that worked well, really well um, on the back, but I did not do any other mo modifications. I'll show you the sweater. I really love the voluminous sleeves on this. Um, and I didn't do anything differently to the body at all. I did the exact same number of repeats. This is a size small. This is the unblocked version. I just, we are leaving on a trip and I did not want to um, just let it sit there. So when we come back, I will definitely block it because I think that it will just even bloom and soften up even more. And I can't wait to see that. I will definitely keep you posted. Uh, but even right now, I'm in love with it. So I cannot even imagine. I'm sure I'll love it even more. What else can I say? I didn't make any modifications. So it is to a T to, to the pattern. Uh, the only thing I did differently, which you wouldn't even notice, but it definitely made it easier for me, is... Uh, she did, for her twisted rib, she had you knit through the back loop, which I always do on the knit, and then purl through the back loop. Well, that was very difficult with the three strands, and I kept not being able to grab all three. I guess my needle wasn't pointy enough or something, but it was just such a pain that I decided I'm just going to purl the regular way and knit through the back loop. So that's what I did there. But but other than that, I didn't make any modifications. I'm trying to think what else I could tell you about it, but nothing. I did put a coat on, even with these very voluminous sleeves, I can still fit a coat. 
And I usually don't like a dropped sleeve because of the coat issue, but this fits in my coats perfectly. So there's not an issue with that. And yeah, I was very sad it was actually over. It went so fast, it's on a size eight needle. I guess I haven't done stranded work in a while and I just really, really enjoyed that. Yeah, I think it's gonna get a ton of wear. I have a pair of gray jeans that I really, and that's the other thing I've talked about this before. I'm really being very mindful about, you know, how I'm making my garments and how I'm gonna wear them and I really have, I have a pair of gray high-waisted jeans that I think will look really cute with this. Yeah, so I can get some other use other than just denim with some of my knits. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. Comes highly recommended. All right, that's pretty much, this is what I just finished. And then on my trip, I always take one skein to make something a pair of toast mitts, a pair of mitts, and this trip I made uh, Beatrice mitts. So I always take this out for coffee in the morning or for kava in the evening, um, or I always took it. And yeah, while you're just sitting there, you actually accomplish something. I love it. So people watching, chatting, you can do that. And, knit. and these are the Beatrice mitts and they're out of trench coat uh, by Turtle Pearl. And I, I can't even tell you how many of these I've made. I usually give them away and this pair is also for a friend. Um, I need to keep a pair because I don't actually have any for myself. <laughs> I keep giving them away every time I somebody says they like them because I like making them and I know I'll make another pair. So those I did finish, I finished this. I wanted to talk about uh, Pearl Soho's latest um, knit along. I have my new project for that in this Rainworks bag. I've talked about this bag before. I absolutely love it. I bought it in Montana. And see, don't you love, maybe this was my inspiration for the gray and brown. So anyhow, uh, Pearl Soho is doing a knit along. It started October 13th and runs till November 30th. And you can hop in on it at any time. And it is for their bandana cow, which I thought would just be an amazing gift. And you can make it plain or stripes, or they have one with a monogram that looks amazing. This is a free pattern over there. And it's made out of their yarn plenty, although I think for the knit along, you don't have to use it, but um, I love their plenty. So I have it in a couple of colors. Uh, let me tell you about it. Let me see. It is 129 yards, 139. So you know you'll need at least that. It's made on a size eight needle. And it is, this color is night blue. Hmm. What? Oh, extra fine merino. And this is in reed gray. Although it's more of a tan but I'm gonna make two of those probably for gifts maybe I'll have to keep one because I really like in the winter something super tight up around my neck like that and yeah I think it'll be great so for their knit along they are giving away prizes and all you need to do is upload all you need to do is upload one of your photos I think on their site or you can upload it on Instagram, but I think it's actually on their site because I was on their website the other day and it said upload photo here. So that's how you enter and their prizes are amazing. So the first prize is $1,000 gift certificate to Pearl Soho Yarn, $1,000. The second one are two $500 gift certificates and then the third prize um, for $250 gift certificates. So they're giving away $3,000 within this knit along to seven lucky people. So that's pretty amazing. And you get a gift out of it to boot. So I thought that was something worth sharing for sure. And maybe I'll take one of those on my trip, but I don't know. I'm really into working on my ranunculus. So I think I was the only person 
uh, the only knitter out there that has not made the ranunculus. Have you made the ranunculus? I'd love to know. So Linda over at For the Fun of Knit. Hi, Linda. She has a great podcast. If you've not watched it, uh, head on over there. She made hers out of a linen, I think, this summer. And I have always wanted a white sweater. And my knit crate had arrived and had two skeins of white. So I decided, yep, that's what I'm going to do. So I bought one extra one because I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough. And I always panic. And I hadn't even downloaded the pattern yet. I think I would have had enough with two. Uh, but I'll keep you posted. But the yarn is really just a snowy, great white. And it's 100% wool. So I'm going to have a white wool sweater, which I always have wanted. And that pattern repeat was very fun to do. Yeah, I know you know all about the ranunculus. I don't know why I'm showing it. Because you've, I'm sure, made them. Truly, I couldn't believe that I had never made one. Yeah, I, when I looked at it, I don't know, 20,000 people have made it. Those are the people that have, or 17,000. A lot of people have made the ranunculus. So I am finally succumbing to one of, be one of the people to make the ranunculus. So I'm really into that. So I'm probably just going to take this on my trip because it's, I definitely have enough knitting. It's not like I'm going to finish that. Yeah, that's all I have on my needles. Just the one other thing I wanted to show you was how I travel and organize my uh, knits when I travel. So I had the Rubinia sweater and the Ranunculus and a Sophie scarf with me and the Beatrice mitts on that trip. I know it was a lot of knitting, but I knit a lot. So <laughs> I just take one of these three ring sort of or three whole binder folders. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but I always have my pattern in a sleeve and I just pop those into this little folder and I take it with me. And inside, I just put the needles that I might use or that I need to use and the ball bands when I take them off. So I had my Rubinia sweater and that was Sophie scarf and then the Ranunculus. So I really like this. I keep some extra paper in the back if I need it. And uh, in the front, I just put like little the map or postcards or whatever I want to over there. But it keeps it really organized. Your needles are all right there when you need them. And yeah, I've been traveling like that for a while, especially not always domestically when I travel, but definitely when I go on a trip, international trip, and you can't pop into a Joanne Fabrics or a Hobby Lobby and buy needles if you need them, like a city. Um, so I like to make sure I have all my needles organized before I leave, and that's what I do. I know a lot of people take their whole um, needle, interchangeable needles with them, but that seems so cumbersome, especially when you take a carry-on for a month like I did. <clears throat> so I don't have a ton of extra room, and... That just is uh, helpful for me. So anyhow, I did want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the, our trip. And not really, you know how Europe is just full of history and oh, culture, all of that. But the yarn shops too. Ah, so we, I had a yarn shop in Madrid and in Barcelona and in Porto. And the one in Madrid, although they were all so lovely, I had been to the one in Barcelona before, so I didn't, and they were very busy, so we didn't really stay long. I, I just surrounded myself by the yarn for a few minutes. And then the one in Madrid, they have several that I saw. I went in two. The one that's off the square, I want to tell you about it because it was set up like nothing I had ever seen. I put it on my Instagram if you saw it over there, but what you do, you walk in and there's a whole wall of tassels and that's how they display their yarn. And so it's sort of set up by weight from lightweight all the way down to a bulkier weight and by content and by color. And so if you have a project, you just can go to that weight and pick out a color 
and then they weigh your yarn for you. So there are big scales hanging, like grocery store scales hanging in the back, and they just weigh, according to your pattern, how much yarn you would need. I thought that was genius. And it was just such a gorgeous display of yarn. If you're a knitter, it truly was like, oh, candy. We had been to the Prado Museum with the oldest collection ever, and there I was, ooing and aahing over all the yarn. But it really, both, that museum was amazing too. But the yarn truly was just, oh, very, very dreamy. And I thought just such an unusual way to display. I did not buy any yarn though, because I had a sweater quantity of yarn and I didn't have any room in my suitcase. So I didn't buy anything, but yeah, it was very interesting to see, and I can't wait to go back. My daughter will be there till July, so I will be back for sure. So anyhow, you guys, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that whatever you're working on, you're absolutely loving it. And yes, I would love to know what you're working on, actually. So if you want to leave it in the comments, um, yeah, we all probably need some new winter projects, right? So I would love to know what you're making. I don't know what I'm going to make after the ranunculus. I have some yarn in my stash, so we'll see. Uh, and maybe just a bunch of bandana cows and, pro and projects for gifts. But <clears throat> I definitely will need another sweater. So I would love to know what you guys are working on. So I appreciate you coming by so much. I'm really glad we're friends to knit with. And until next time, take care. Keep your hands busy. All right, bye. Toledo. Eh, ¿Y cuánto más cara es? La de... ¿Esta 6? 10,40. Oh.